Good morning, it's day eight and it's another moose hunting day. The weather is absolutely spectacular as you can see around me. It's some departure from the rain that we had at this time last year, but funnily enough, it's roughly the same time we killed our moose. Now, I had a bit of a difficult night last night, didn't sleep too well, back's feeling a bit sore. I think it's just the accumulation of hiking and packing that's kind of catching up with me and my old bones. But Steve, first thing as usual, has spotted a moose out there on a ridge overlooking camp. It's about, I don't know, 800, 900 yards away. Now, I can't see if it's a three or two tines on one side. You know, we need to make sure it's a legal bull before we harvest it. So we're gonna pack up now, get a bit closer, about 400 yards closer, sit up on a knoll and then have a look and see what the day brings but you couldn't ask for better weather for glassing but unfortunately you couldn't ask for worse weather for packing so fingers crossed it's going to be our bull but so far the signs are looking very positive. Steve, as is normally the case, saw one of the bulls that we'd been looking at yesterday a little bit closer in, about eight, 900 yards across the valley. He's gone into a, a thicket. I can't see if he's two or three brow tines. Very important to make sure that it's either a minimum 50 inches wide or has three brow tines. You can see three brow tines and it's a legal bull. So what we're gonna do now is, while Steve's got his eyes on the older patch that the bull's gone into, I'm gonna go and set myself up on that little knoll uh, about 400 yards away, half the distance between us and the bull. Even if I can't get eyes on the bull, at least I can get eyes on the thicket and we can see a way around it. And once we're in position, then Steve can come and join us and we can make a plan from there. But it's the closest we've been, I think. We've seen a lot of animals here, and this is, I think, our first real opportunity of getting a bull down, so not a moment to lose. So we've made our way down to the high point, which is just opposite the saddle where we saw the moose. Now the wind is kind of blowing across uh, from my left shoulder here, so I'm gonna try and get a little bit further round onto the far ridge, see if we can glass up behind those alders. Can't see anything at the moment, but there's a lot of space around him, a lot of meadows. I'm pretty sure he hasn't got out. While he's making his way over, I don't know what he's seen yet. Obviously there's no way of communicating between us, but I'm sure he'll let us know if he's seen him move off to the left or the right by the time he arrives. The key thing now is to kind of hunker down, get ourselves in an elevated position, see if we can pick apart those alders and see if we can spot that bull. Now, can we see if he's a legal bull or not? Because once we can make that judgment, we can then make a plan as to how we approach him. But so far, so good. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning, still got plenty of the day left. He's still in the oldest rank, you So we managed to make our way up onto the ridge, which is pretty close, about five, 600 yards maybe from where we saw the moose. Now he's disappeared into some alders. So we shifted around position, see if we can see up the side. And actually it's not just an older patch. In between there's quite a deep 
gully that he's kind of stepped into, which means that he could moved his way all the way down this valley and we wouldn't know where he is. Once we got a bit closer, I got the spotting scope on him. I can only see two brow tines on each side, which means that as long as he's 50 inches, he could be legal, but he didn't look wide enough to make 50. So probably not a legal bull, but another year and he'll be legal. So what we're gonna do is we know he's here. He's been milling around for most of the morning. He hasn't seemed to no, he's not panicky, but what he has done is he has disappeared into some thick undergrowth. We can see this spot from camp. What we're gonna do is head back, get some lunch, maybe go and set up on the knoll, see if this one comes out later so we've still got a good view of him. And there was one between two waterfalls a little bit further down with glass yesterday. He looks a little bit bigger. Of course, he's a bit further away, but you never know, we might be able to do some calling, get him to call in. You've had a pretty good moose call this morning. Cow call. <laughs> and as you can see, the hills are now alive with animals after that cow call. Because we're not sure, we've got limited time. Best to see what else is down there and something else may have popped out. Problem with being so close to this bridge here, of course, we've got great visibility, but we can only see this. I think if we get a bit further up back towards camp and then a bit further down the valley, that'll open up a lot more ground to us. And with this sunshine, if there are paddles out, we should yeah, be able to see them. So good morning so far. It's been worth the effort coming up here. At least we also know that it's reasonably flat down here. There's not too many gullies to climb over. So if we harvest one here, it's going to be a reasonably straightforward pack. So there's the morning shift done. Let's go and get something to eat and then come out this afternoon. Good idea. So while we've got a few spare minutes in between glassing and chasing moose, I thought I'd just have a quick rundown of the rifle that I'll be using. Now, this is a Sauer 404 XTC, the C standing for carbon. Because of this beauty, this is a hand-layered carbon fiber stock, all protected in a synthetic resin, so it's pretty rigid. It weighs in around 6.1 pounds, so it's pretty lightweight, 2.7 kilos for those of you working in metric. So I used the XT version of this rifle in Alaska last year, which has the synthetic stock and I got on really well with it. I love the ergonomic grip. It's got an adjustable cheek piece as well so you can raise the comb height to fit your eyes straight behind the scopes. Good for addressing the target straight away. Cold hammer forged steel barrel. This one's fluted for further weight reduction. Can't see it at the end there because I've got tape over the end of the barrel but it's also got an M15 by one thread in case you're using a moderator or a muzzle brake. I don't particularly like using muzzle brakes because they make my ears go a little bit tinny. And the great thing about this uh, carbon fiber stock is not only is it rigid, uh, it also absorbs quite a lot of recoil as well. Well, I'm shooting 300 wind mag this time. It's reasonably punchy, not as punchy as a 338, but this stock has been soaking up quite a lot of the recoil, which is good to know because when you've got a lightweight rifle, there isn't as much mass to absorb recoil from a fairly heavy cartridge. Now, the trigger setting has got four different weights of pull, 550 grams, 750 grams, 1,000 grams, and 1,250. This is set on 750, which is still quite light. I like to have a little bit of feel of the trigger. It's got a nice wide blade, but I don't want it going off unexpectedly. It's perfectly customizable to you. Now, the great thing about this Sauer 404 XTC is it's modular. You can take out the tool from the forend, put the tool in the stock there, and the forend comes straight off. That means you can change the barrel. There's one, two, three screws there. You undo those, swing the locking lever down, you can take the barrel out, and then put that back on again. So if you uh, want to shoot just one rifle, lots of different calibers, then this is a perfect solution for you. The scope is actually fitted to the XTC using one of these Sauer saddle mounts. It's quick release, so you just swing the two levers back, swing them forward, and the whole scope comes off. Once again, just swing it back on, push the levers around, and there you have it perfectly back on zero. This has been on and off this rifle several times. You've got to be a little bit careful because this receiver here is aluminium, a steel, so you've got to make sure that you're aligning it perfectly before you tighten it up. But otherwise, it um, comes straight back onto zero every time. Now bolted on top of that, we've got one of these new Hawk Endurance WA scopes. This is a 6 to 24 by 50 LRC reticle, which is long range center fire. Now that's got several different aim points on the reticle and you can adjust those to suit your ballistics perfectly. So zero for 100 yards. Maybe if you want to shoot out to 600, you put your 600 yard pin on 24, adjust the magnification and then all of the rest of the aim points from 100 out to 600 will be taken care of. As usual with Hawk, it's pretty solidly built. It's got a 30 mil 
mil monotube construction for ultimate rigidity. It's got 18 layer optical coating for maximum light transmission. It has a side rear stack controlled six level of illumination reticle. Also on the saddle you can see it has the focus adjustment and these really cool adjustable elevation and windage turrets which are quarter MOA. So everything you need is adjustable to hand but you've also got a four inch magnum friendly eye relief and this fast adjust ocular bell just to make sure you get the perfect crisp image through the scope. The end is also threaded for a variety of different accessories. I use a flip up cover you can also get a sunshade adapter for that as well but all in all pretty good package now of course this is a premium price rifle and this is a budget price scope but together they seem to be doing the job perfectly. We didn't have to take a pretty long shot on the caribou this time it was only at 130 yards so I had to wind it right the way back to six magnification just to make sure I get a good sight picture but so far it's working really well. Now Sauer provide lots of different accessories uh, you can see we've got the rifle sling here there is a multi-tool in the rear quick release which you can use for taking off the rear stock as well so all in all lightweight compact perfect for hunting in the mountains supremely accurate and so far has delivered oh, certainly on the caribou front all we need to do now is find a moose and as if by magic not one but two mature bulls appear by punching close with a spotting scope trying to pick out the bulls defining characteristics while Steve scans the ridge for more animals. The bright sunshine creates a somewhat unhelpful heat haze, but we patiently observe, waiting for the right animal to step out. And then the monster steps into view. This huge bull is exactly what we've been looking for and is undoubtedly the big one we've seen high in the mountains over the past couple of days. During the pre-rut period, I tend to use calls sparingly to spark a bull's interest, but Wildy has a couple of new tricks he'd like to try out. It's coming. Whilst the bull responds positively to the cow call, it certainly did not like the sight of the white meat bags and runs back into the mountain. I watch his progress intently through the spotting scope, hoping it decides to stop and look back, but to no avail. This bull is definitely bugging out. I gather my thoughts and try to piece together a new strategy. This bull is just too good to let go this easily. I quickly grab my pack and head down the valley to assess our options, anxious for one last glimpse of this monster and a ray of hope for tomorrow. Time is wearing on, it's about half past five and we're way down the valley now. Of course that moose bugged out, it came along the ridge probably about 300, 400 yards maybe and disappeared over. Now I've come down the centre of the valley to look at what our options are. The further down the valley we get, the thicker it gets choked up with willow. Now it's not impenetrable but it makes it tough going and of course the darker, older that's up there is pretty much no go. There are a couple of places that we can go up but to be honest I think I'd rather leave it until tomorrow. It's going to take a couple of hours to get up onto the plateau by which time it can be started 
starting to get a bit dark and we've still got a couple of hours to get back home. So it's a real disappointment for me. That's a moose of a lifetime, you know, it's definitely plus 70 plus inches. It's just about being patient. He responded well to the call. The white game bags kind of scared the bejesus out of him when he took off down the valley. Over this ridge is another bluff and that kind of disappears away into another valley beyond. So I'm pretty sure he's made it out of the valley, but you know, never mind. There's other bulls in here. The one that he was with earlier, much smaller bulls I'm sure you saw. Might go 50 inches, but he had three brow tines on one side. So at times like these, you can feel a little bit disheartened, but that's hunting, you know. There's a big country out here. There's some big animals but it's also it's really tough to get into him he's as big as he is because nobody's managed to outsmart him just yet we've still got a couple of days probably one more day realistically particularly this far out because it's going to take a while to pack it back in but i think can have an early night see if he's kind of come back down because he was with a younger bull earlier on see if we can bring him back in and, and if not we'll keep an eye out for black bear but a bit of a sad end to a, a tough day but you know that's the way it goes and there's a hell of a journey back to camp so i suppose we better get going